So while America was watching the Super Bowl, basically Israel was bombing Rafa, where over 1 million Palestinians have sought refuge. And so far, at least 100 people were killed. At least 40 of them were children. And Israel presented this strike as a quote unquote diversion to free two hostages. And we'll get into that later. Brad has some theories about that. But they called it a diversion, and an Axios reporter, Barack Ravid, thought it was appropriate to tweet that out as if that's kind of an acceptable thing to do, to create a diversion that kills 100 people in order to free two hostages who could have been freed in negotiations, and they have killed hostages that did, they didn't need to kill by shooting them. And, and that they I, shot just three to, of them. Just yeah. to interject, I believe it was earlier, within a week, uh, I believe Netanyahu had rejected the uh, yeah. ceasefire agreement, which part of that agreement was releasing all of these hostages. Right. And so that just another way where that could have been accomplished without killing anyone. Right. Without killing anyone. And of course, if they cared, I, I know I sound like a broken record, but if they cared, like we know they hate Palestinians. We know that they think they are subhuman. But if they did that one thing that they claim to do, which is that they really care about Jewish life and they create a, a, um, a haven for Jews, They'd, of course, be doing everything they could to free these hostages, but they don't. They would much rather kill Palestinians and save the lives of Jews. Biden has spoken over the phone with Netanyahu the day of the bombings on Sunday and apparently told him, quote, a military operation in Rafah should not proceed without a credible and executable plan for ensuring the safety of and support for the more than one million people sheltering there. OK, end quote. But. We don't need to worry about Israel providing support for Palestinians because they're so good at that. In fact, we even have a picture of this. This is a picture of their aid, and it was tweeted out by the uh, Israeli, uh, the country of Israel tweeted this image out. It says it's a tweet by the country, by the government of Israel, literally Israel at Israel on Twitter. 11,000 trucks, 140,000 tons of food, 1,000 water trucks, 17,000 tons of medical supplies, 23,000 tons of tents and shelter equipment. Israel will continue to facilitate the transfer of life-saving humanitarian aid to Gaza. Our war is with Hamas, not with the people of Gaza, right? And then they write hashtag free Gaza from Hamas. And it says, and approximately 23 tons of tents and shelter equipment. And so that image below is supposed to, is apparently the shelter equipment. But there's only one problem. So here's what that actual image is. Okay. Oh, an eye stock it's, image. It's an eye stock image, right? And what it actually presents is tents in Moldova, Moldova. for Ukrainian refugees. Land and, arranged on the territory of Moldova. Yes. And shout out to uh, Twitter user Cheyenne86. You have to be skeptical of what Israel's saying because it is true. They do lie a lot. And uh, Israel just, that's their, their thing. They lie. In fact, um, Netanyahu was on the Sunday morning news shows saying that the, ready for this, that the civilian to terrorist kill ratio was one to one. I think that any civilian uh, loss, any civilian casualty is a tragedy. Uh, and it's a tragedy that is forced upon us by Hamas. But let me tell you something. I'd be cautious with the Hamas uh, statistics. And I can tell you that uh, according to these uh, urban warfare experts and other commentators, uh, we've brought down the civilian to terrorist casualties, the ratio, down below one to one, which is uh, considerably less than in any other theater of similar uh, warfare. And we're going to do more. He said this on the Sunday morning news shows. And they just move on from that. Jonathan Carl was kind of like, mm, really? <laughs> We're going to wait a minute. Wait a minute. You're, you're saying it's only been one civilian that's been killed for one Hamas terrorist in Gaza? Yes, that's exactly what I'm saying. Yes. He should have had the numbers on hand. He should have been like, sorry, but 30,000 Hamas people have not been killed. 30,000 civilians right. more have been killed. And there's still people under the rubble as we speak who have not been recovered. And there's still people who could have been recovered, not just recovered like physically, but they could have been saved if they it, had had the fuel needed a, to operate just, the machinery to get just, them out. It's, it's just wild that there is, they were still that blanket acceptance uh, more or less, even after they were literally ruled as having a plausible case of genocide, right, genocide by the International right, Criminal right, Court. Right, which was the most aggressive ruling they could do. 
They yeah. couldn't rule it was genocide. They had the the only options was plausible or implausible. Like that, like that ruling meant the genocide case will exactly happen. will proceed. Yes. Right? Yeah. 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 We have, I think, one more clip. Right. And this is with someone who Brad is a big <laughs> fan of Elon Levy. He's an Israeli government spokesperson. So let's listen to what he had to say and then we'll uh, look at some responses. We urge civilians to get out of the way because we don't want them to be hurt. Where Hamas they has go? two strategies. Well, there are areas north of Rafa where we have already cleared the areas of Hamas, and we want to see civilians going to areas where Hamas is not operating. So that are you now are saying that warning. everywhere north of Rafa? is now safe and that there will not be Israeli bombardment if people move into those areas. Unfortunately, until Gaza is no longer governed by an internationally prescribed terrorist organization that is deliberately trying to hide behind civilians, Gaza will not be safe. So there is no... So, yeah, okay. N there's literally nowhere for, for civilians are going to get killed no matter what. That yeah. them's the breaks because we have no choice but to bomb. That's what David Cameron said today. There is literally nowhere for them to go. And he is right in saying that, isn't he? No, we designated, for example, the Al-Mawasi area, just to give one example, as an area in the Gaza Strip where Hamas has not already embedded itself with that vast tunnel network inside the Gaza Strip to hide behind. You just contradicted yourself. You said that there's nowhere safe because you haven't gotten rid of Hamas yet. And now you're saying that you've given them safety zones. And of course, we know that in the past, they will tell the Palestinians, the Gazans, go here because it's safe. Then they go here and then they get bombed. Crying civilians. You say they should get out of the way, but you've also admitted in this interview, there is nowhere safe for them to go because there is nowhere where you can say there will not be airstrikes. Look, since Israel could have gone in all guns are blazing on October 8th, we didn't because we knew the results would be catastrophic. Okay, so let's see what Brianna Joy Gray's response to that was. Elon says Israel gave Gazans a three-week warning to evacuate after 10-7 instead of going in guns blazing. In fact, within the first six days, Israel dropped more bombs on Gaza than America did on Afghanistan in a year. So that's her response to him. But Brad, I believe you have your own response to him. Brad made that, guys. Brad made that. That's I, how much he hates him. 